okay, Doppler effect. What is it? First of all, it is the observed difference in frequency between a moving object, in this case, a satellite, and the observer, you. So I think a really great example of this is, you know, when you're on the highway, you're, you're rolling down the highway, and all of a sudden you hear that motorbike come out of nowhere. That is an example of the Doppler effect. So now that we know what it is, let's talk about it in terms of this very specific use case, this Fram to Ham SSTV event. In this event, the images are going to be transmitted from the capsule on 70 centimeters. Now, Doppler effect has a greater impact on the frequency the higher you go in frequency. So if this was being transmitted over two meters, we wouldn't have to worry about it so much. The 144 megahertz uh, impact is not nearly as pronounced as it is on the 440 megahertz. We have to account for it and we have to deal with that. So let's go to the computer and take a look at how we deal with the Doppler effect for this event. Okay, I'm going to use Chirp to help illustrate the Doppler effect. And I'm going to show you how you could program your radio for this specific Fram to Ham event. So if we look here on the screen, you can see I've got 21 presets. Eris suggests that you use a frequency step of one kilohertz to maximize the signal quality when you're trying to receive these SSTV signals. If we take a look here, the published frequency for the capsule or for the transmission is 437.5 dot five five zero megahertz and this is what we're calling our center point of the pass or time of closest approach so this is the point in which the orbiting body is closest to earth and if we look at that frequency right the uh, after the um after the decimal it is 550 the pass is going to start frequency number one here and you can see that we are actually 10 kilohertz higher than the frequency of the transmission itself and that's because on the 440 downlink you need to start listening 10 kilohertz higher because that's where the frequency is going to be observed at the point of observation, again, that being you, than the frequency itself. So here you can see the first memory channel is 437.560. And that's when we're going to have acquisition of signal or acquisition of satellite. Now you can see here that I have a, a memory preset or a programmed preset for one kilohertz clear up to that TCA or that time of closest approach. Now once that orbiting body passes that time of closest approach, we're gonna see the frequency start to decrease, right? So that frequency is higher as it approaches us on the downlink. And then once we cross over that time of closest approach, we see that frequency start to decrease. So I have one kilohertz steps listed here. And the idea is that as that satellite moves through the sky or as that capsule moves through the sky, you're changing your memory preset to stay in tune, so to speak, with the transmission from the capsule. Now, I also have a couple of other items here just to reinforce some of this. I created a programming set here for the Baofang radio, right? This is a very popular radio and many people have these laying around and you may have one of these and want to try to receive these signals. The interesting thing about the Baofang though is it does not do one kilohertz steps. It can only do 2.5 kilohertz steps. So instead of having 21 presets, we've got 17 presets. Just for the fun of it, I've created a five kilohertz step programming file. And this is commonly what I use when using, uh, using a voice repeater over a satellite or the International Space Station. Now, Eris suggests that this will not give you a very good quality uh, image, and they very well may be right, but I'm gonna try it during this event anyhow. I will make these files available and I'll put the, uh, the web address here on the screen so you guys can grab those if you're interested.